as I was watching it the first time, my my reaction was just like incoherent noise and just being like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, what, oh my gosh. what, oh my what? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like trying to think like, so we're back with another Solo Sam Reacts. Uh, what's your relationship to DPR Ian's music? DPR Ian, I think, is literally one of the most fascinating artists that's making music right now because of his relationship with cinematography and film and how that translates to him making music. The detail and specificity that he's able to implement in his music and how when you're watching his videos, you can just see how perfectly they pair. And furthermore, even if you have no background of knowing what any of his videos are, you can still hear how much he like wants the sound that he's going for. I just think that that's just like so cool for an artist to want to do that. Do you know anything about this release? I know that it's out. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been holding off on it for a very long time. I was tempted. As in like two days? Two days is a very long two time Two days for you. is a very it's long so time. so long. Is there a reason why we're doing solo Sam Reacts? Like do you have any projects going on bro? Yes. So I am going to be creating a podcast and every episode we're going to be breaking down songs that are in the krmb sphere uh, some asian american artists basically r&b that has stood the test of time that people are still coming back to and listening to and songs that i really enjoy and i think musically are pushing the bar and the boundaries and how musically they do that it's going to be every week. I'm just so grateful to React to the K for giving me the opportunity to really pursue something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. Do you think we'll do an episode on this album or some of these songs? Oh, absolutely. What if we get DPR Ian? If we get DPR Ian, that would be, I have so many questions I'd ask him about this, about just musically what he was in. Oh man, time to, Time to get cooking. <laughs> Time to start writing that script, bro. You get the idea. You ready? I, I'm just excited. I cannot wait to watch this video. Three, two, one. Wait, did I go wrong with you? Okay. Oh wow. What? Holy moly. Oh, you see no blueberries and nerd. Oh my gosh, that's his previous Mido. Of my potential. You are my first. And I'll make sure to be your last. You created me in your image. And now it's time to create mine in yours. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sarah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, wait. Because that's clearly the, the previous Mido lighting. So, considering the, the oh my gosh. Gosh, these strings. Oh. Okay, I think that was the intro. Okay, I think this is the start of the next one. Oh. Oh my gosh! Mmm, that's something he's so good at is in, in, including sort of like sounds as like transitions for his stuff. Like whether it be a match or like a gunshot, he's so good with that kind of stuff. Wow. 
Oh, the van closing on the four. That's so clean. Holy sh... Mmm, that was a good octave down. You know what's funny? The lighting is flickering with the guitar sample. That's dope as... That's so dope. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, there's so much to- oh my gosh, okay. Dude, what in the world? Oh, I hear the no blueberries guitar. The clean electric guitar. I'm sorry. No. Wow, that. Oh, look at those colors. Oh my god. That is probably like. These are probably some of the most like beautiful color palettes like I've seen like in a video like ever. Just like how the wallpaper like plays with Oh my gosh. I need to like Oh my gosh. Oh, the <laughs> oh my gosh, and he went into funk? Oh my gosh. Oh, and he goes into... Dude, what? This is like a mix between orchestral symph symphonic composition with like funk. We'll talk about that. That's just like... Oh my gosh. Oh. That knife is floating. Don't do it. Oh my gosh. Oh. Mm. Wow. That was What a pocket that he's creating with that. Wow, that pocket with the trap beat is like mind blowing. Cause this sound is like so fundamental in like, like funk music. Like he's really drawing a lot of funk music inspirations, but juxtaposed with these like trap beats and with these like really lush orchestrations is creating something that like I've literally never heard in my life before. We'll talk about instrumentation and orchestration, but like, this is mind blowing. The, 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 what he's sort of tapping into is just like unreal. Oregon? Orchestra? With MIDI brass?
No, no way, no way, no way, no way. What? That's it? Part one, bro. Oh my god. Wow, I that was really met your expectations, I'm guessing. In a way, it almost surpassed a lot of what I was expecting. Mido to me, the first one seemed like the introduction to who Mido is in like what sort of the identity of your darkness is and how to sort of like identify what your darkness is, who your darkness is. This to me feels like the consequences of Mido. Obviously, I haven't done a whole lot of digging into what the themes are because this is just like literally me listening to these for the first time. When it comes to cinematography, I take a very like musician's approach, like a very light motivic approach where it's like, oh, because we see this so many times, of course, it must mean that this is like a theme or something. <laughs> it must be important. There is just so much imagery that the most striking one, obviously, is the knife. But like there's so many parts of it in which she he's in the black and white kind of images which to me is really reminiscent of the first mido to me there was just so much black and white in those that it kind of like created or it imposed on me that was kind of a symbol of the themes of mido of the first album therefore as he was just jump cutting from the black and white to these just so saturated reds. You couldn't see anything else but like red. It was so like bright, it was insane. The beginning of Seraph, right when the title card drops, you see how it just like completely turns into this like vibrant hue of red. And especially if you look at the album art, is that exact same thing. I feel like he's trying to create a parallel, just establishing the color themes of Mido and uh, Mido 2. Yeah, but what do you think the colors represent? I don't know if they represent something physical. I think it's more like a representation of differentiation between the two. Sort of like, I want you to like remember these themes that I established in the first one. And then the red is, is sort of like saying, this is what I want you to like recognize as the second album. Let's talk about music. Oh my gosh. That intro was brilliant because in your intro, what you want to do is you want to establish your atmosphere. You want to make it something that your audience can latch on to and is believable and is something that like enticing and they want to like keep watching. Going in with the low C, then going into distortion and then going straight into a C minor nine. I am a huge sucker for nine chords to build energy, whether it be for uh, positive valence, like to create a positive building momentum or to create atmosphere and ambiance and to create sort of like tension. Because that's the cool thing about nine chords in class in sort of like orchestral classical settings. Because in jazz, if you use a nine chord, it's practically a major chord. It's practically a one chord. So in an orchestral setting, this one is really more so used, it's kind of like the lighting almost. Right when the title card opens up for Mido, I think the way that he orchestrates that is just so, so cool. I think this actually gives us a little bit of insight as to like what the theme is because right before that, he's having a, he's doing a monologue speaking as Mido. Right when there's a dropout of all the instrumentation, all the orchestration, and he goes, set my wings on fire. It's almost like the clouds are opening up. It's a big old cluster chord in the strings. Like, man, right when that happens, the, you can see that the, the lighting, the lights just like come pouring in. If I weren't watching this video, what do you see when you listen to this? Honestly, when I listen to this, I hear like the, I see like the clouds opening up and like the sun pouring through. It's literally the exact imagery that like I, that would, I would associate with this. That's just like a really cool image that he like portrays in this video. For the intro also being, I love sweeping kind of like string lines on top of chords. I just think the melody that he chooses is really good. Let's go into Seraph. The thing that I remember about this song, 
where the chords what we start with is we start with an f f sharp minor chord basically the crux of it is what it is is basically an f sharp minor chord and a g major chord to me as the musician i don't really know entirely what our tonality is because f sharp major or f sharp minor makes me think that like if we're in the minor key we're probably gonna either do a walk down or maybe we'll do a six four one five or we'll do kind of like some kind of progression that will like go into the musical space and make some sort of like traceable sense in that way but what he does is he kind of like chooses a chord that moves out of the tonality in a very like striking way without being too uh, abrasive. What he decides to do is he decides to go to the flat seven of the relative major of one. And I feel like, I don't even know if there's any song in KRMB that really does any flat two modulation. Yeah, Doom, or sorry, not Doom, Mood. Mood takes a much more traditional approach that we've heard before like the bum 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 like the the the, the ambiance of that sound is something a lot more gentle and something a lot more like clean and a lot more reverberated because we've heard it before it just sounds a lot more like comfortable and yeah i really like how he kind of like chooses three different types of instrumental affects something that has a very f quick attack short release like very plucky in that kind of way the definition of like plucky is that it has a very fast attack very fast release despite that he chooses three different sounds to use as samples at 444 <laughs> there's a one two three bump. Wow. like there's just like a like every single beat of that measure is like has something to like grab on grapple onto that is just a completely different sound from what it was before going from funk into like just a boom and then orchestral arrangement that's just like oh my gosh he's like he's like transporting his sound across one measure with ribbon the crazy thing about ribbon is that like that like syncopation is so funk is so 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 funk and then there's one more sort of plucky instrumental for some reason i want to say it's like wolfpeck because it's like so like like funk based and like with the lush orchestrations and the big like dpr ian type like trap beats and the very like resonant sounds that he's been creating to then be juxtaposed in the last song was something that it's almost like the reverb was like sucked out of it if you've watched like everything everywhere all at once like the scene where she's like ah oh! like that's what it feels like like but like in a moment because it's just like oh reverb 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 nothing whenever there's strings in this song there's just like so much there's so much reverb the space sounds huge and i want to talk about that trap beat also because what it does is as it's like a what is that what is that is it is it double Yeah, so the snare kind of alternates between because the 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 sample it's like a da 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 and then the snare the the snare and the trap beat is like da 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 like sometimes it'll like accentuate the syncopation if they have the instrument on the top and then you have the drums sort of like the 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 sheet music sort of like lining up you'll see that they kind of really really get into that pocket by making sure that there's no like straight like rhythm at all in the trap beat even though trap beats like locked in in that kind of way this one is very much like heighten the pocket the intro of mood is actually pretty extended it's just like him and guitar it's just very like boom da 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 boom da 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 and for some reason my brain didn't even expect it to go from that into like a and then right at 4.32, there's like a synthesizer that's like really to satisfy that pocket. And I just think that's really cool. God, this <laughs> one shot's melody is so good. Just like the flow of it is so good. 
There's something about it that like the pocket is so strong. Honestly, it might just be the, the vocal line because it's like it's accentuating like the parts that are like really strong while the beat is structured for four like I'm trying to think what BPM that would be, but it's like definitely lower than a hundred. I guess I'm like almost positive. Something about the syncopation in his voice creates a really, really, really strong pocket in that. Because he does like the first time he does it, bum bum, that is on the one, so that way it accentuates the one beat, important strong beat, but bum bum, bum bum, so the second beat is not, doesn't have any vocal line, so it's like bum bum, bum bum, and what it does is it accentuates the syncopation really, 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 really strongly. And then the second, the third, the third beat doesn't, is the exact same thing. It's a bum, 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 bum. Like that's that, that syncopation, it feels like it's like pulling you, it's dragging you. And because it's a repeated motion, it just like establishes that this is the pocket and it is so strong and it will literally like, push you around like a seasick person on a boat, but in a way that's like loving and tender and makes you feel really good about yourself. Like, I just, I think, oh man, oh man, it's so good. It's just like, what a melody, man. What a melody. That establishes why that chorus is so strong rhythmically and just like feels so good. As I paused at 157. I love this shade of blue and I love the shadows because if you listen, there's just like an element of like darkness to it, isolatedness. Because to me, when you hear these strums, if he wanted it to be, it still maintains the volume and the dynamics of it being a legato, small kind of like guitar, sort of like line. It's played as if it's very like abrasive or like something that would be kind of cacophonic. It's almost like he's playing it not on a guitar, but like a mandolin and to my ear. So it's really interesting because my brain, when I hear like guitar samples, especially in KRMB, how they use sort of like plucky samples or like plucky leads. Think about like No Blueberries, for example how that one is a clean electric guitar. Think about like Dean's Instagram, clean electric guitar. Like there's like a sound that like I associate with like the first eight measures of songs. And obviously this might sound like a generalization, but just like for where my brain was expecting the intro to go, because he does use a clean electric guitar later in this, but this song uses one that's very plucky, but still is not distorted, not clean at all, but sounds very raw. There's no distortion on it. There's no nothing on it. It just sounds like a mandolin, which is really cool. Epilogue. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. DPR Ian. Um, hi. Um, I don't know if you're going to watch this, but you are literally incredible. This was so incredible. And I am so so excited to see part two. I, can't, I literally can't wait. You just keep raising the bar. The bar has been elevated even more from Mido, which I thought was literally incredible. And I'm just, I can't wait to see what you do with part two. That little teaser that you gave us at the end, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm antsy. I just cannot wait to see it. So thank you so much for, for blessing us with an incredible video. I can't wait to dive deeper into the album. And yeah, thank you so much.